you take your Bible, we will open up this morning with a familiar passage of scripture that I think is so relevant to this week. What we are going, what we are dealing with this last couple of weeks. And uh, the text is found in 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. The word of God gives us clear indications, clear signs, clear warnings of the times that we are living in right now. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And uh, I want to share from the New King James version of the Bible. You have me say amen. Amen. I do encourage you to uh, bring the word with you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Uh, God has given us so much wonderful technology now that there's no reason why all of us should have the word with us. Telephone, iPad, uh, the old fashioned way, still works. Still works, amen? Uh, and so we, we want to open up to 2 Timothy chapter three, verses one through uh, five. The Bible says, but know this, Know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people, turn away. Paul says to God's people, we need to turn away from these people. Let us pray today as we consider the topic, a day such as this. A day such as this. Father God, in the name of Jesus, this morning, we need your Holy Spirit desperately this morning. We need you, Lord, to help us, help us make sense, Lord, of the things that we have seen take place in our world. Help us to know where we are in the stream of time and also in the stream of prophecy. You have told us in your word, when we see these things, we need to lift up our head. So today, Lord, speak through me. Speak to our hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A day such as this. We have read this morning a passage of scripture that has been the topic of discussion and debate for thousands of years. No doubt, most of us have read this portion of scripture and have even many of us heard it preached many times before. And sometimes it may seem that we've heard it so much and so long that we have grown complacent and insensitive to its message. The Christian today will admit that we believe the Lord is coming soon. But few of us are living as if we really believe he is coming. But at this morning, I just want to emphasize that that day, the day of the Lord's coming, may be closer 
than we even realize. This is a day that the church has anticipated for over 2,000 years. It is a day that we have looked forward to. Shortly after Jesus ascended in the clouds of heaven, the apostles were already looking for the end times. Right after Jesus left, his disciples were under the impression that they would be alive when Jesus came back again. In 1 Peter 4 and verse 7, if you turn there with me, Peter here gives us the word among them at that time. 1 Peter 4 and verse 7. Peter says, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Peter thought that the end of all things was at hand in his day. Amen? In his day. Also, flip over to 2 Peter chapter 3 and looking at verse 12. Again, same Bible writer. He says in 2 Peter 3 and verse 12, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Peter was certainly looking for Jesus to come back in his day. Also, we see again, John the Revelator in the book of Revelation, he wrote down that he too was anticipating the second coming of Jesus in his day. Turn with me to Revelation 22. Revelation, last book of the Bible. Revelations 22 and verse 20. The apostle John is writing unto the church. Here's what he says. He which testifies these things saith, surely I come how? Quickly, amen. Even so, what? Come, Lord Jesus. How many of you out there today can identify with John that you are ready for Jesus to come? You're ready for Jesus to come. You, you've seen enough, amen, of, of what this world has to offer. You recognize that times are not getting better, amen. Clearly, this is the day, the Bible calls it the blessed hope that the church anticipates. But we must understand and we must grow and we must have a sense of urgency, amen, and recognizing how close we are to that day. I want to take a few minutes to discover what the Bible says about these last days. And as we look at what the scriptures teach us this morning, Brother Raph Sexton in his book wrote this. He says, he says, there are people alive today who may never see the undertaker, amen, but they could meet the undertaker, who is Jesus Christ, amen. A day such as this. The Bible says that the reality is the last days are no longer future. I want that to sink in a little bit. We've been talking about this for a while, and I think many of us are under the impression that the last days is still future. No, no, no. The Bible indicates, based on the prophetic uh, uh, word, that the last days started a while ago. We are in the last days. Hallelujah. Peter says it like this. He says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know we're living in perilous times. We are living in perilous times. This idea of perilous has with it 
the idea of dangerous. How many of you agree we're living in dangerous times? It, it also has the idea of the times being fierce, fierce. How many of you agree we're living in fierce time? It also has the idea that we're living in such perilous times that it's hard to bear. I, I, I don't know about you, but uh, just the thought of what those families are going through in Texas is hard to bear. Just the thought of what those families went through in Buffalo is hard to bear. And to think that times are going to get worse and worse. We live in perilous times. World, just in the last 10 years, world has grown more and more wicked. Trouble abounds on every hand. I believe, Elder, that uh, God is uh, getting ready to release those four angels that are holding back the winds of strife. Jesus says it's going to be such a time as we've never seen before. Hallelujah. Trouble abounds on every hand. Uh, peace and serenity is something that everybody longs for right now. Life has become difficult. Amen. We are living in the days of the most troubled times that has ever existed on earth. I would, I would dare to say that people today have surpassed the people in Noah's day in wickedness. I would posit today that people today have passed Sodom and Gomorrah in wickedness. Would you agree with me this morning? I believe that the only reason God hadn't come already and judged this world is because this is going to be the last judgment. And so God is allowing sin to fully ripen, fully run its course so that nobody will, will, will ever think about sinning again. Hallelujah. So we're going to see we're going to see the real character of Satan being displayed in this world. God is going to allow him in his wisdom, God in his permissive will, in his sovereignty, God is going to allow things to happen that we've never seen before. Hallelujah. These are the days that we're living in right now. Word of God declares and warns us that these days would come. And I want you to know not that they will come, they here right now. We need to know that perilous days are here. It was the Holy Spirit who led Paul to pen the words for Timothy as well as for those who read and embrace the scriptures. We often stand amazed at what is happening in the world. But we are told that these days will come. The stage is being set, my brothers and sisters, for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Uh, I believe that uh, most of the prophecies are fulfilled. I believe that Jesus can come. And, and the Bible says, it, 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 the Bible indicates not what man indicates, that the world is getting better. The Bible teaches us that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. You to be able to shoot second graders tells me that something is amiss. You to be able to uh, grab a gun and shoot senior citizens in the grocery store 
tells me something is amiss in this world. Used to be days where you respected, if you didn't respect nobody else, you would respect the little two, or you would respect the elderly. Something is amiss in this world, and we know what it is. Amen. We know what it is. Bible says also something else was going to happen in the last days. And I want you to share, share that with you. It is found in 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Paul, the apostle, again, lets us know that there's something else we can look for that indicates we are living in the last days. What does he say? He says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means. Brothers and sisters, there's so much deception going on right now. Paul warns us that we should let no, no what? No man deceive us for that day. What day? The second coming shall not come except there come a what? A falling away. And that the man of sin be revealed. The man of sin is being revealed. The devil is showing you his true colors. Hallelujah. The devil is showing you what the world would be like if he ruled the world. Be a world of chaos, evil, and wickedness. The man of sin will be revealed, the son of perdition. There will be a falling away. What falling away from what? Falling away from the truth. Falling away from the church of the living God. Are we not witnessing that right now? Are we not living in the days where uh, people have fallen away from truth? Are we not living in the days where people walk around talking about alternative facts? Are we not living in the day when, when people are saying, uh, you got your truth and I got my truth? Are we not living in the day where people are saying that there is no absolute truth? Are we, are we not living in the day where people are saying, you have your God and I got my God? People are falling away from things we thought were, were, were staples in society. That was a time when, when, when we all thought, when, when everybody thought certain things, everybody agreed on. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, people question even the basic decency of life. We're seeing a great falling away. Churches across the nation are empty. People are leaving the house of God. Young people are exiting the church at an alarming rate. Amen. The Bible says it is time for us to wake up out of sleep. For the day of his appearing is near. Many today feel that if things are spiraling out of control, mankind is sinking to untold depths of depravity. School shootings, movie theater shootings, grocery store shootings, and not to mention the, the number of shootings that happen every day in the streets of our major cities like Chicago, New York, in Atlanta. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says the world is sinking to new depths. Then we look in the financial arena. Inflation, gas, almost $6 a gallon. Hallelujah. We're living in perilous times. Perilous times. And I believe it's because God is setting the stage. 
God is making things ready for his son's second coming. The Bible says these things must come to pass. I know it's hard for us to bear it, but the Bible says these things must come to pass. Look at the description that the apostle gives of these traits of these people in the last days. Look at verse 2, 2 Timothy 3. He starts off by saying, if, as we look at people living in the days just before Jesus comes, that will be us. That people will be generally lovers of their own selves. That has the idea of people are mostly selfish. Looking after their own interests first. Amen. Then he says the number, the second thing people will be is covetous. That means they would love money and material gain. Boasters, they would be empty pretenders, bragging about their accomplishments and no recognition or regard for their fellow men. They would be proud, showing themselves to be above other people despising others or treating others with contempt and hatred. Blasphemers, they would be uh, slanderous. They would be reproachful. They would speak evil of their neighbors. They would be disobedient to parents. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, this is the most rebellious generation that we've ever seen right now. There is no respect for authority in the land, in the home, in the community. Somebody was telling me the other day, said that you, that was Sister Pounce was telling me that, that when she, when she was growing up, that, that, that uh, if you, if you went down the street and did something wrong, that that neighbor down the street would straighten you out and, and, and call your parents. And then when you got home, your parents would straighten you out. She was indicating that back then it was a village that, that we looked out for one another and that kept uh, a lot of things, a lot of children safe in the community. Amen. Now, you don't hardly see that. Uh, if you say something to somebody's child nowadays, the parents will be mad with you. Parents be ready to fight you. Who told you to say something to my child? So people be quiet. Amen. We're living in an age of unthankfulness, ungracious for anything. We are, we, even though we are blessed beyond measure, we are not thankful for what we have. Paul, uh, Timothy goes on to say unholy. That means wicked. Some of the stuff we see it now just pure deep wickedness. Hallelujah. It's, you know, we keep trying to lump everything under the guise of mental health. Come on, somebody. Mental health. All these people. Some, some of these people don't have no mental health problem. Come on now. Some of them do, but not all of them. Uh, you, you, you know, you got, you, that, some of this is just evil. Running amok. Without, the Bible goes, gives another description that says, without natural affection. In the last days, people will be without natural affection. You know, we have to be careful nowadays talking about that. Hallelujah. People don't want you to talk about that. But it's in the word of God. Paul says people will be uh, uh, without natural affection. That means uh, that if they don't have natural affection, that they have unnatural. Hallelujah. We see in the breakdown of the home. We see in the breakdown of the community. We see in the breakdown of the family. We see in the breakdowns of the two 
primary institutions that God established at creation. Hallelujah. Marriage and the family. God established what a marriage should be. Come on, somebody. God established what the family should be. Man comes along and says, no. I say, you can have a family any way you want without natural affection. Hallelujah. God goes on to say there will be false accusers in the last day, truth breakers, incontinent, fierce, unable to be tamed, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded. God wraps it up by saying that they would have a form of godliness. Many want to appear to be religious, but some wear it as a facade, pretending to be filled with the spirit when they're filled with something else. There have been uh, no change in people's lives. They are simply going through a form of worship. That is what denying the power of God means. Amen. Paul says the modern church in our day will be tied down to the mechanics of worship as a science. They would have plenty of programs and preferences but no power. No power form of godliness, but no power to change people's lives. No power to change the community. No power to witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. The average Christian has no testimony, no power. What is the responsibility of, of us in the last days? He goes on to say in verse 5, 2 Timothy 3, he says, we should turn away from such people. We may be living in the last days, but we must still proclaim the last day message for a dying world. Amen? This is the last warning message that God is going to give to the world. He has called you and I to proclaim it to the world. Paul says, don't become like them. Hallelujah. Because just because a person carries a Bible, amen, just because a person stands behind a desk, just because a person preaches, just because a church has a sign out front, does not mean that that church is filled with the spirit and power of God. Every person claims to be a Christian may not be a Christian. But we must know the difference. Hallelujah. We could have all the people in the community. God expects us to stand true to the word though the heavens fall. Would you agree with that? Seeing all of this, as Timothy rightly tells us, that we are, not we will be, we are living in perilous times. We are living in the last days. And God expects us to understand the times that we are living in. And, no, and don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Understand that we are nearer to his coming than when we first believed. How many of you agree that Jesus is closer than when we first believed? Amen. We are closer to the Lord's return than when we first believed. And I believe that Jesus is waiting on us to continue to proclaim the last warning message.
to a die. And look at God. He's given us technology. He has given us all kind of ways now to help spread the gospel. Amen. The gospel is going, it's going to go. It's going to go. It's going to be preached into all the world. The question is, will we have a part in it? God is going to finish his work. Amen. The gospel is going to be a witness to all nations. And then the Bible says, Jesus will come. I don't know about you, but I long for Jesus to come. Hallelujah. Are you ready for Jesus to come? There's a hymn found in the, in the Oh, that's hymn number 220. It says, it says this, it says, it is almost time for the Lord to come. I hear the people say, the stars of heaven are growing dim. It must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Why? The night is almost gone. The day is coming on. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Verse 2, verse 2. Listen at what it says. The signs foretold in the sun and moon, in earth and sea and sky, allow proclaim to all mankind the coming of the master draweth nigh. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Why? The night is almost gone. The day is coming on. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Look at the third verse. You have the words on the screen. Look at the third verse. It must be time for the waiting church to cast her pride away with girded lords and burning lamps to look for the breaking of the day. One more time. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The night is almost gone. The day is coming on. It must be the breaking of the day. Verse 4. Go. Go quickly out in the streets and lanes and in the what? The broad highway and call who? The main, the halt, the blind to be ready. That's our charge today. To be ready for the breaking of the day. You want to be ready for the breaking of the day. Just raise your hand right now. As we prepare to pray this, this this afternoon, it says it must be the breaking of the day. I believe Jesus is soon to burst through those clouds. He that shall come will come and will not tarry. I believe what the word of God says that it must be the breaking of the day. The day is coming on. The, the night is almost gone. The day is coming on. It must be, I believe, my brothers and sisters, the breaking of the day. Heads of our as we pray this afternoon. Father, thank you again for reminding us once again of the times that we are living in. Lord, help us not to dis be discouraged. Help us not to leave your ship. Help us, Lord, to, 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 to not be thrown off in fear. Help us, Lord, to see what is going on as signs of your soon coming. Lord, help us to do all we can to tell everyone we meet to be ready for the breaking Help us to tell our family members. Help us to tell our loved ones. Help us to tell our co-workers. Help us to tell everyone that we come across that you are soon to come. 
Help us to be like those angels flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. Help us to share the good news that Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Father, today there may be somebody here who heard a call in their heart from you. There may be a man, woman, boy, or girl who want to submit to you. There may be someone here today who want to begin a relationship with you, Lord Jesus. You have sent them here today, and today your word has penetrated their hearts, and they want to, to say, hear my Lord. Send me. Is there one here today who wants to respond to the call of God? Is there one here today who wants to say, Here am I, Lord. Send me. You want to make that commitment to the Lord today? Just slip your hand up there. God sees it. He knows who you are. He knows you are here today. Is there one? Father, I thank you each and every soul represented here. There may be somebody online who's watching this service who want to respond to you, Father. You want to respond to the call of God online, just reach out to one of us here at the church. Let us know that you responded to God's call. You want to say, here am I, Lord. See, Father, we thank you, thank you, thank you. But all that we've experienced today in this time in your house, now we ask that as we lead, as we go out in separate ways, that you would place within our hearts that burning desire to spread the good news all around that Jesus saves. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for all that you have done. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let the church say amen, amen, amen. God bless you, and then have a good rest of your Sabbath. I'm going to invite Brother Nelson to come and give us our closing remarks and prayer. We have heard the servant of the Lord speak to us today and to remind us that we are living for a appointed time. And so we just want to thank God, thank the pastor for putting that before us today. So let us stand, be dismissed. And, uh, if you are in need of anything, we are here for you. Is it prayer? Call us. Ephesus Project is made available for our members. We have a community service program for those who are in need outside our church. But we're going to pray for one another that we will be ready when the Lord comes. Can we do that? Amen. Let us pray now as we prepare to be dismissed. Father God, we, we thank you for your manservant, and the message to remind us that there is a day when you will come. Lord, help us to wake up out of our sleep and, and know that it, our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Lord, we don't want to be lost. And so while we have this opportunity to sure up on our oil, Father, Help us to make sure that we're able to keep our lamps trimmed and burning throughout the night. But we know that there will be the breaking of the day. So dear Father, he that beginneth the good work in us, we know that you are faithful to complete it. For Jesus, you are the author and finisher of our faith. Lord, we want to grow in the grace and knowledge of you, Jesus. But we know that when you come, you know, Lord, we want the Heavenly Father to see you in us so that we can hear those faithful words. Well done, my good and faithful sir. Lord, that's what we want to hear. What we don't want to hear is depart from me, for I know you not. But Lord, help us to reason with that now 
And we thank you for the time that we have. You've delayed your coming to save us. And so, Lord, now we see what's in this world, and we're sick and tired of it now, Lord. We're ready to let it go and to grab a hold of your hand. So keep us until that appointed time, we pray. And as we go out those doors, cover us with your blood. Cover us with your angels, we pray. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. May God bless you. You may be dismissed.